What's up, Natty Trap Daddy? So today we're talking about ego lifting. Now, normally when you hear the phrase ego lifting, you probably think of someone using way too much weight, using momentum, using partials, someone who is trying to impress other people and attract a lot of attention in the gym. Quarter reps, half reps, eighth reps? You don't really hear about eighth reps, do you? Just quarter reps, half reps, eighth reps, and sixteenth reps get no love, do they? But they're using momentum, body English, body language, whatever you want to call it, in order to move as much weight as possible. In other words, they are so focused on the weight they are using, it is to the detriment of the technique they are using. However, I have noticed a different form of ego lifting. People who are so obsessed, so focused on the technique that they are using, it is to the detriment of the weight they are using. In other words, some people's egos are attached to the weight, other people's egos are attached to the technique. And by now I've coached a lot of people and I have noticed a trend of beginners who are hyper-focused on technique to the detriment of their progress, their progression, and their performance. So they could be using significantly more weight, but they're moving very, very robotically. Perhaps they're squeezing all their rows, they're focused ultra focused on this mind muscle connection and it is actually to the detriment of their muscle growth. They're not making progress because they have to keep this ultra strict technique. And they've been told technique is the most important thing. It's more important than progression. It's more important than volume. It's more important than effort. It's more important than proximity to failure. All those things don't matter if you don't have the perfect technique. I'm calling absolute BS on that because I've seen people who are small with amazing technique and they make shit progress. And I've also seen people who are absolutely freaking massive and their technique is leaving a lot to be desired. So ideally you would have both, but don't sacrifice either for the other, especially in the extreme. And what I'm working here is a lower back. And this doesn't really get talked about very much, but I would say this is about as prevalent as the typical form of ego lifting. So I would say roughly a third of clients that I see are pretty much spot on in terms of their technique versus progression versus effort. A third of clients are the classic ego lifter. So the ones who are using too much weight, they're kipping on their weighted pull-ups. Yeah, that makes sense. They are not quite going down far enough on squats. And if you can't go down far enough, that's fine. But if you're quarter squatting and you are doing that for quad growth, that doesn't really make sense. If you're doing a leg press and it's like, no, you're going to want to be going down deeper. And that will probably include taking a lot of weight off the bar or off the leg press sled. However, I see just as many people who are moving very, very timidly. They are clearly overanalyzing during the set. Oh, how internally or externally rotated should I be? Uh, it was that tempo okay. I didn't pause quite long enough on that rep. Oh, I lost a tiny little part of the range of motion on this seated cable row. And they are clearly just so up in their own heads that it is actually getting in the way of their progress. And I have to really, really encourage them to add weight to the bar because even if their technique breaks down very, very, very slightly, it's still going to be better for them in the long run. Now, obviously, this is going to vary lift by lift. If someone is doing a Romanian deadlift or a back squat or something like that, technique is going to be very, 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 very important. But on something like a chest-supported row, you know, using a little bit of oomph or not quite getting to the very top of the range of motion is totally fine. And I would say that is actually a sign that you're doing things right and that your effort is on point. If you've never taken a set of chest supported rows or machine rows to actual failure, you're like, yeah, I think I was two reps in reserve. You're probably missing out on a lot of benefits. And luckily with this whole lengthened partial movement that we've been seeing recently, it's gotten people out of their comfort zone. And I've noticed people are not quite feeling as bad about not getting that full range of motion in the contracted position. For a long time, people sort of felt bad about not getting that full range of motion for some reason. But in reality, you are getting just as much, if not more, 
from letting yourself go beyond failure or letting yourself use a little bit of oomph on these safe movements. And if you look at how a lot of bros train, either enhanced or natural bros, they train almost like ego lifters in a lot of ways. They're using a lot of momentum. They're using some slop on their bent over rows. And in reality, it's working. It's often working better than the guy who's using ultra strict form, really trying to isolate, no momentum, five seconds on the way up, strict pause, eight seconds on the way down, that kind of shit. And they're bigger and they're getting better results and yet they are somehow the ones who are wrong. Now don't get me wrong, it can go too far in either direction. You want somewhere in the middle where you are not ultra focused on your technique, but you are not ultra focused on the weight either. Again, a lot of people should be taking weight off the bar, but a lot of people should be putting weight on the bar as well and allowing at least some form of momentum or partials or some way to accommodate that extra resistance. By the way, this video is brought to you by Boostcamp. They are the long-term sponsors of the channel. They are a fitness app that allows you to log your progress as well as gives you access to some of the best programs out there on the market. Uh, I myself have two programs up there, Ravage and Rampage. One is a three day per week full body training system that is focused on hypertrophy. The other one is a toned down version of my own training plan that I've used over the past year and a half or so. They are both hypertrophy focused. It also has plans from Alberto Nunez, Alexander Bromley, Peter Kachetarian, and a whole lot more. So definitely check them out if you are interested in something where you can log your progress, as well as have access to those programs. And it is free. So I will leave a link in the description. Definitely check them out. And thank you to Boost Camp for sponsoring this video. One thing to keep in mind is that these partials or this momentum, it should be controlled. So if you see someone and they're doing like, okay, full range of motion, one rep, then half range of motion, another, then a quarter range of motion, then a full range of motion, then a half range of motion, and they're just all over the place, or they're using a lot of momentum here and then very little momentum, that doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're doing partials beyond failure, you might do full range of motion, full range of motion, full range of motion, full range of motion, then you don't quite get that last part of the range of motion on a row, but you're trying to. You're trying to get full range of motion, you're just failing. Then you'll get slightly less range of motion, then slightly less, then slightly less. But there is this methodical downgrading of the range of motion as you accumulate fatigue. But it's not like just completely all over the place. Same thing with cheating. The cheating is not gonna be totally cheated, not cheated at all, half cheated, no. It's going to be cheating just enough to complete the rep while still using the target musculature. Now, don't get me wrong, just be strict or never use momentum or use this perfect textbook technique. It's not necessarily bad advice, especially for beginners. And I think that's a good place for beginners to start. But if you want to progress to intermediate and then from intermediate to advanced, you might need to throw that technique out the window at some point on some movements. You have to find your best form that might be strict on some movements and not so strict on others. If nothing else, it is safe. That is the safe answer. That is the answer that's not going to get you into hot water or any lawsuits or anything like that. But keep in mind, what is safest might not be best for progress. And what is best for progress might not be the safest, especially if you really want to maximize things, you might need to accept some amount of risk at some point. If you're just a hobbyist, you're just lifting for health, this might not apply as much, but if you're really trying to push the limits of what is possible, that might mean taking on some injury risk at some point, and it's very rare to see someone who has lifted hard for eight, 10, 12, 15 years who has had zero injuries. I'm not saying it's the goal. I'm not saying you should get injured. I'm saying you will get injured. I'm going to make sure. That <laughs> now, one argument for strict technique is the stimulus to fatigue ratio. I'm not entirely sure if strict form is always better from this standpoint. Sure, you might accumulate more fatigue with a slightly looser style of training, 
but you're also getting more stimulus. And it's also possible that you're getting so much more stimulus that it is worth that fatigue, especially if you are someone like myself who is very resistant to fatigue. Well, I'm already doing like 35 sets for back, even beyond failure. So hypothetically, if I got better stimulus to fatigue ratio from super strict form, what am I going to be doing? 60 sets, 80 sets per week? At a certain point, it just gets kind of ridiculous. Furthermore, I think there is a level of stimulus that you can get on some movements with a little bit of momentum, not a ton, just a little bit, that you simply could not get with ultra strict technique. So it's not like you just do more sets to make up for that. I think there is a certain level of stimulus that is just not comparable with ultra strict form. For example, a slightly cheated row might not be equal to two sets of strict or even three sets of strict or four. It could be that the amount of tension and stress on the muscle from using significantly more weight from just a slight cheat is so much greater that it is triggering hypertrophy that the strict form simply never could. I think this is particularly true for natural lifters. You see some enhanced guys where they're using ultra strict technique because they are very risk averse and because they've already, those pathways are already turned on when you're using that many drugs. And so they just train differently. They're more risk averse. They're more about the mind muscle connection. They're more about fluff and pump, about just getting a lot of blood into that area, just flushing that androgen infused sauce into the muscle. Sauce all over me. Sauce? Whereas for natural lifters, I've noticed that progression is more important, the weight lifted is more important, and they use a little bit of body English that the enhanced lifter might not need to or want to use. And if you are very risk averse, maybe you have a history of injury, maybe you are enhanced, uh, maybe this is just a hobby and you really don't want to get injured, you're just super, super against that for some reason, use super strict technique, lots of control, slower tempos, pauses, don't go beyond failure, don't go to failure, don't go zero reps in reserve, don't go near failure, don't even sniff failure, don't get grindy reps, don't let form break down at all, don't use other muscle groups to assist, move robotically, isolate, use mind-muscle connection, etc. And yeah, you'll probably never get hurt, but you'll also probably stay pretty small. Now I want to emphasize that there are some lifts that you probably should not cheat or use partials or momentum, that kind of thing. So something like a squat, RDL, most pushing exercises or pressing exercises, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to cheat because the sticking point is in the middle. This is most appropriate for stuff like dumbbell lateral raises, cable lateral raises, chest supported rows, cable rows, skiers. So a lot of pulling movements, a lot of rowing movements, a lot of shoulder isolation, you know, some curling movements, etc it makes sense to use a little bit of slop to get the most out of these movements because these are already fairly safe movements. And so adding in a little bit of extra momentum is totally fine. Now, one of the big criticisms of using rest pause or momentum or partials is that they are harder to track progress. And I actually agree. However, which is more important to you? tracking your progress or making progress because those are two different things would you rather make less progress but be able to track it or make more progress but have it be slightly more difficult to track personally i would rather make the progress and have it be a little bit less consistent in how exactly you know you are progressing when you're advanced it's even harder to measure progress anyway but if you are observant you should still be able to tell. As long as your momentum or your partials are fairly consistent, you can still tell if you're getting better or not. And if you can't tell, you need to work on your powers of observation. For example, something like a Helms row, I pretty much always train beyond technical failure. It's most difficult at the top in that contracted position. And so I just go until failure and then I keep pulling until when I want to stop. This might be until I can barely bend my arms. This might be when I lose half the range of motion or a third of the range of motion. It varies. There's not like a fixed point where I say, okay, the set is done. I don't think that's a bad way to do it. 
but I basically just pull until I give up. Now in March 2021, I was doing 34 kilos per hand for 15, and now I'm doing 45 kilos for 13, so 32% higher. And that is about 0.5 kilos per month. So a pound a month, roughly, or about 0.1 kilo per session. So yes, session to session, that is very, very difficult to track. And you don't know whether you got stronger, how much of the range of motion, but I'm not going to get out my protractor to measure during the set, film every set, you know, adjust the angle. Oh, wow. I, I only got this 17 degrees up rather than 18 degrees. Oh, oh no. No, I zoom out, I give a good effort when I'm training, and I just see if I am getting better month to month to month. And sometimes I will go up and wait, allow a little bit of form breakdown in the form of not as much range of motion or a little bit more oomph, and I will simply clean it up later. I've noticed a lot of very, very good lifters do this, and it's almost like a form of step loading. So you go up and wait, the form breaks down slightly, and then you clean it up, then you go up and wait, and then you clean up the form later. And I think that can work well, again, on some lifts. This is not something to do with RDLs, like, oh, my back rounded more, then I'll clean it up later. Maybe not the best idea, okay? So on some movements, again, back squats, RDLs, these lifts that are just straight up inherently a little bit riskier, it's not worth doing. This is more for movements that are lower stimulus and lower fatigue and don't have as much risk. And keep in mind, just as there are a range of weights that are suitable to challenge you and to grow your muscles, there is a range of momentum on a lot of lifts that you can use and still make very, very good progress. Ranging from ultra strict to super sloppy, often somewhere in the middle is gonna be best. Also, it's gonna vary for each individual and it's gonna vary based on each lift as well. And this is one of the joys of training finding your form. All right, that is all for this video. If you like this and you want to hear more training musings, you can check out my books. They are packed with a ton of information that will help you a lot on your fitness journey. Feedback has been incredible. I've priced them extremely affordably, probably lower than I should, uh, but they are my gift to the world. So I will link those in a pinned comment if you want to check them out. Thank you so much for the support and thank you, th 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 thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.